9.4, the tangent ratio. The tangent ratio is a trigonometric ratio for acute angles that involves the lengths of the legs of a right triangle. TOA, if you recall from last class introduction to trigonometry, TOA stands for the tangent, the O stands for opposite, and the A stands for the adjacent. So recall that the equation is the tangent of some theta, remember some angle, it's gonna go inside of there, equals the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. This is the trigonometric ratio we're gonna dive deeper in today. We're gonna to examine how to use it to find lengths on triangles. Example number one, find the tangent of S and the tangent of R. Write each answer as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to four, four places. So the tangent of S means that we're focused on angle S. So if you can imagine, you would draw a theta up here in this angle, which means that 80 is opposite and 18 is adjacent. 82 will always be the hypotenuse, but when we're working with tangent, we are not working with the hypotenuse. We're only working with our opposite and our adjacent. So in this case, the tangent of S, that's the first one we want. The tangent of S is opposite over adjacent, 80 over 18. You can simplify this, it would be a 40 over nine, and I think that's as low as it can go, but it also wants us to uh, round it to four decimal places, so that's approximately 4.4444. And then they also want the tangent of R. So now put your pen on R, right there in the corner, opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent would be 18 over 80. So depending on which theta you're working with, the arrangement of the opposite over adjacent flips, which is approximately 0 0.2250. These two numbers represent the ratio of the opposite to adjacent side lengths in this triangle. Okay, before we start to use the tangent ratio to help us find missing lengths on triangles like this one, we need to review how to solve equations that look like this, where you've got a fraction on one side and you've got a whole number or an item of some kind on the left. Also notice that in this equation, the x is in the denominator, and in this equation, the x is in the numerator. There's a different method for solving each one of them. There's one consistent way to do it. You can think about it as cross multiplying. Recall that if you have a whole number like this, like 10, you can always write it over one, which makes it a fraction equal to a fraction, which makes cross multiplying um, a little bit easier. So then we would take X times 10 and we would have 10 X and one times 200, which is 200. So then we've fixed our problem of having a fraction equal to a fraction. Now we just have a regular equation. And then you divide by 10. 20, uh, 200 divided by 10 is 20. So the process here is to write your value over one and then cross multiply. If, the, if that is in your denominator, you're gonna end up doing a, a piece of division if your x is in the denominator. Now let's take a look at this one. We can also solve this one using cross multiplying, or you can just think about on this right hand side, we've got an x divided by nine, and I want x to be by itself. So which piece do we really need to take away? We need to move the nine. So what we need to do is multiply both sides by nine, and x will be 27. So on a problem like this, where the X is in the numerator, you really just need to multiply by your denominator value to eliminate that value. Okay, let's try an example where we're gonna finally use trigonometry to find a missing leg. So here's our triangle, it's a right triangle, a 32 degree measure up here or down here in the corner. 
We know one leg is 11 and I have a missing leg and I have no information about my hypotenuse at all. Find the value of x. So we wanna know how long this is. It looks like it's probably gonna be a little longer than 11. I'm not sure how much longer, but just to take a guess. Round your answer to the nearest tenth, which is one decimal. Uh, for our final answer. And uh, now I'm gonna ask you some questions. Can you use the Pythagorean theorem? Well, the only side length I know is 11. That's not enough information to use the Pythagorean theorem. So no. Can you use similar right triangles? Is the altitude drawn in? No. So no, we cannot use similar right triangles. So what's the third tool in the toolbox? Our third tool in the toolbox is trig or trigonometry. Trigonometry, anytime you see that word or anytime you feel like you might need to use it, you should write down the phrase so, ka, toa. So ka, toa is how you decide which trig ratio you're supposed to use on any given triangle. So once we approach this triangle, we would like to label the side lengths based on this theta. Recall last class, we would draw a theta in one of the acute angle corners. In this case, we actually have an angle measure. So everybody take your pen or your pencil or your finger and put it on 32 degrees. Now 32 degrees is opposite of 11. I know that this leg here, or this length, is the hypotenuse, but I have no info for h. I don't know anything about h, so I'm just gonna kinda like leave that be. So no info about h. And then that means that x is gonna be my adjacent side length. Now the two side lengths that we're interested in, if I have no information for h, but I do know something about my opposite, and I want my adjacent, you can even kind of circle it. X is my adjacent, 11 is my O. So take a look at the two letters we're working with, an A and an O. Now come over here and look at your trig ratios. This one is an O and an H, so not this one. We don't need that one because that involves an H. This one's an A and an H, we don't need that one but this one is an O and an A. That matches O and A. So you're really looking at these second two letters in each of your trig ratios to determine which trig ratio to use. So if you've circled your O and your A, then you need to use the tangent ratio, an O and an A. So now we're gonna set up an equation. So we're gonna say the tangent and normally it would be of theta, but in this case we know theta is 32, equals our opposite over adjacent, 11 divided by x. Now this equation looks very similar to this one that we solved up above. I have some number equal to a value divided by x, which is very similar to this. The tangent of 32 is just a number. It's just a value. You can even type that into your calculator and get a decimal. The tangent of 32 as a decimal, you should type it into your calculator and just test this. The tangent of 32 as a decimal is 0 0.6248 with some more decimals. So this is just a number. It's just a value. You can even just think about it as a 32. What you do need to remember though, is that this, these three letters, T-A-N, do not break away from the 32. You can't just work th with the 32 alone. 32 and 0 0.6248 are not even close to the same value. So you need to work with them separately. So what we're gonna do is follow the same pattern we did up above. We're gonna make the tangent of 32 become over one, and we're gonna cross multiply. The tangent of 32 times x is the tangent of 32x, and one times 11 is 11. Now remember that in between this tangent of 32 and an x is a multiplication symbol. I'm gonna draw it real small there. 
and we want to get x by itself. So we're going to divide off the tangent of 32 on both sides. When we divide off the tangent of 32 here, all we're left with is an x over here equals 11 divided by the tangent of 32. This is an exact answer, 11 divided by the tangent of 32, but it wanted us to round our answer to the nearest uh, one decimal place. So you just type into your calculator 11 divided by the tangent of 32, which is going to get you 17.6. So this length of x is 17.6, which is reasonable, it's longer than x. Pause this video and try a few more on your own. Twenty five point seven for this one and twelve point two for this one. It was really a twelve point one nine. But because that nine is larger than five, it rounded the one up to become a two. Let's try one of a different flavor. Find the value of X here. So from 56, X is opposite and 13 is my adjacent. So we're working with an O and an A. So we're still setting up a tangent ratio. So the tangent of 56 equals now X over 13. This one's of a different flavor because this one has an X in the numerator rather than the denominator. So recall, if we're trying to solve for X, who's attached to X? 13, it's attached with division, so we undo division with multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides by 13. So x equals 13 times the tangent of 56. And you can write it without a multiplication symbol in between, and you can even type it into your calculator just like that. This is an exact answer, 13 tangent of 56. But if we want it rounded to the first decimal place, you just uh, 13 times the tangent of 56, and 13 times the tangent of 56 is approximately 19.27, but the 7 is larger than 5, so it rounds the 2 up to a 3, so 19.3. Now here's a question for us. How do you know you need to use the tangent ratio and not sine or cosine? How come we have only been using tangent this whole section? Well, you, you know that you need to use a tangent ratio because your two sides you're working with are the O and the A, not, not working with your H. So remember, the, tan, the TOA part of the trig ratio, you're really looking at these second two letters and determining that you're working with an O and an A 
and you're not working with an H, no H. All right, let's try this last bit, solving real life uh, problems. The angle that um, an upward line from a site makes with a horizontal line is called the angle of elevation, elevation. <clears throat> the angle of elevation. So what that means is that you've got a horizontal and your angle is lifting up from that horizontal to create an angle measure right there, a theta in between. So we're gonna try to use this in some uh, real life examples. You're measuring the height of a spruce tree. You stand 45 feet from the base of the tree. You measure the angle of elevation from the ground to the top of the tree to be 59 degrees. Find the height H of the tree to the nearest foot. This is what's called indirect measurement. And indirect measurement uses trigonometry to measure things that might be too tall for you to measure using a uh, you know, yardsticks or measuring tape. So first thing you should do, step number one, is to draw a small picture. So we're measuring the height of a spruce tree. There's my tree. <laughs> you can put little bush on the top if you want, but not required. So that line can just be my spruce tree. I'd like to know the height of that spruce tree. You, a person, stand 45 feet from the base of the tree. So here's the base of the tree, and I am standing 45 feet from the base of the tree. You measure the angle of elevation, so that's gonna be the increased angle there, from the uh, ground to the top of the tree. The ground to the top of the tree to be 59 degrees. Find the, fight, the height H of the tree to the nearest foot. We can also safely assume that this is a very straight spruce tree, so it's a right triangle. So now let's think about what side lengths we're working with. From 59 degrees, my H is my opposite, and my 45 is my adjacent. So we're working with an O and an A. So O and A is the tangent ratio. The tangent of 59 equals H over 45. Solving for H, it's divided by 45, so we multiply both sides by 45. So H is approximately, when we type that into the calculator, 45 times the tangent of 59 is 74.89, but it said round it to the nearest foot, so the height is approximately 75 feet. because the eight rounds the four up to a five. Pause this video and try the second one on your own. hundred and ten inches. Thank you.